Amen and praise the Lord to his joy. New Beginnings Community Church. Pastor William Beasley Sr. is our pastor. We're going to ask you to help us uplift the Lord in this song. Hallelujah. All right. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Amen. We do not own the rights of the music. We are the signs of the time all across the, the land, even in our own backyard, so to speak, know the Lord is soon to come. So we just give God glory for another opportunity to, uh, to 
assemble together. He said, well, two or three would assemble together in, 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 in the name of Jesus, that he would be in the midst. So we give honor to, excuse me, the spirit of Christ on tonight for being in our midst. We pray that he would lead and guide our, our mind, our thoughts on tonight as we revisit uh, another class as we would as we were doing our reading, the Holy Ghost uh, pulled pulled us to this uh, to this particular text, so we had to deal with it again. And so it is very vital. It is very vital. It is very important that we understand uh, God's plan of salvation and God's. Uh, yeah, it's very vital, very, very, very vital that we understand God's plan of salvation. Mm -hmm. Not man's plan, <laughs> but God's plan. So many, so many uh, assemblies and ministries today are, are being saved by man's plan. And the and the uh, and and the tradition of man of men, but we want to uh, we want to know God's plan of salvation. So we're gonna pray. We're gonna get into it. We thank God for the beginning of being present with us on tonight. Thank God for my dear brother and his family as they enjoy a vacation. <laughs> Thank God for tuning in, even on vacation. God bless you. Thank know you. the Lord will bless you for your faithfulness. Thank God for the new mother being faithful unto the ministry. Sure the Lord will bless you. We thank God for those that view on uh, Facebook and those that will view later on YouTube. We thank, we give a special, special blessing to our YouTube viewers. We thank God for our YouTube viewers on tonight. They, they support the ministry. They, they follow the word of God. We pray that the Lord will, will bless them accordingly. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. We'll bow here. Be gracious in heaven, Father, in the precious name of Jesus. We come tonight just thanking you once again for mind to be assembled together. We thank you for the mighty work that you are doing in this ministry across the internet, Lord God. We pray for the souls, Lord God, that you have allowed to hear your word, Lord God, that you, for the souls that you have brought your word into their view, into their method of viewing, whether it be Facebook, YouTube, or Zooming in. We thank you for those that are viewing, Lord, across the seas, across the world. We pray for them as well, that they will continue to follow your word. We know that your return is near, for we see the signs of the time. We can discern the signs of the time. We pray that you will continue to lead us and guide us with your word. Continue to prepare us for your return. We praise you. We glorify you. We ask that you would move in this place on tonight according to thine will. Give us understanding of, of what you have purpose for the body of Christ. And we praise you. We glorify you. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank God for you once again, and if the Lord has moved upon you to be a blessing financially to the ministry, and you want to gift the ministry, you can gift us at uh, New Beginnings Community Church, uh, Memorial, California, Givenify, sure that the Lord will bless the sacrifice and faithfulness. Tonight, we're coming out of the, out of the book of 2 Thessalonians, still with Paul. We're dealing with, we in the book of 2 Second Thessalonians. God bless you. Praise the Lord. How are we doing tonight? We, uh, 2 Thessalonians, uh, second chapter, and our, uh, our focus verse is the 13th verse. And uh, what we're dealing, what we, what we're dealing with tonight is uh, what we're dealing with tonight is 
God's God's well, God's plan of salvation. We want to highlight tonight God's plan of salvation. Because now is not the time to uh now is not the time to be confused or be misled or misguided. And there is a difference between God's plan of salvation and man's plan of salvation. And so 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, verse 13, is our focus verse. I'll be reading the King James Version tonight, and you can follow along in whatever translation that you use. Uh, it's on the worksheet. 2 Thessalonians, second chapter, 13 verse says, But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you. This is Paul talking to the Thessalonian church. 13 verse says, But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. We have to, we have to pay close attention to <laughs> the scripture. Paul is letting them, Paul, Paul is letting them know. He called, he's, he used terms like brethren, beloved, because uh this particular time, this particular time, there were a lot, there was a lot of confusion going on. A lot of confusion. And 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 hear, hear me well. There was a lot of confusion going on and a lot of misunderstanding going on with the uh with the church in Thessalonica, the Thessalonian church. Uh some of them thought that Christ had come. Some of them, some of them uh, thought that Christ's return was, you know, going to be so soon that some of them quit working. And some of them began to uh, not maintain, the, you know, the standard, their faith in Christ anymore. Mm -hmm. Some of them became busybodies, and, and uh, some of them became concerned about those that had died and passed on. And so there, were, there was just a lot of confusion going on. And so Paul here is uh, he's trying to comfort them, uh, you know, and trying to assure them that they have obtained the glory of God. They have obtained the favor of the Lord. They have obtained it. And so, in one verse that we're not dealing with on this lesson today, Paul let them know that, you know, that God has uh, called us to eternal life and not to uh, destruction, so to speak. And so, I'm going to read verse 14 down to 17, and then we'll get into the lesson. Verse 14 says, Whereunto he called you by our gospel, to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. 15. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. 16. Now, our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which, uh, which has loved us and has given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. The body of Christ, uh, there, there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of confusion going on in the body of Christ. And so Paul is con <laughs> Paul is concerned about the body of Christ. Uh, being comforted with, with, with not only with the grace of God, but with the peace of God. And so, like I said, he used words like uh, brethren and beloved. But, what's, but what, is, what is interesting, 
is that he let the church know. And here's where we have to start paying close attention to the lesson. He let the church know. Listen, he said, uh, he said, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation. Because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation. Now, God's plan of salvation from the beginning was sanctification. It was through sanctification of the spirit. Continue to read the verse. He said, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. And so mm -hmm. sanctification, what is sanctification? Sanctification is to be set apart. Sanctification is a state of purity. It's purification, it's holiness. Sanctification is the action of making or declaring something holy, the action or process of being free from sin or purified. Now, they, God has chosen, God has elected or God has chosen from the beginning that salvation would come through the sanctification of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. You have to hear what the Spirit is saying. We're going to take our time because there are so many ministries and there's so many so-called church members that say you don't need the Holy Ghost. That's man's plan of salvation. Mm -hmm. Hear what Paul is letting the church know. God has chosen from the beginning salvation through sanctification of the spirit. That's God's plan of salvation. God has chosen or elected to set the church apart or to purify the body of Christ by the sanctification or by the infilling of the Holy Ghost. This is uh, the Holy Ghost is, is the seal, is our seal. It is, the Bible said it is, it is the earnest deposit. Mm -hmm. It is the spirit of Christ. It is God's spirit, which he told, uh, which would, which he told that this would be the new covenant, that he would write his laws in our heart and in our mind. The, the new covenant that we are under, the law of God is not written on stone or tablets. It is written in our heart and our mind by the Holy Ghost. God has chosen from the beginning. Hear what the scripture said. God has chosen from the beginning that you and I, the church, our salvation would come through the sanctification of the Holy Ghost. What is salvation? Salvation is deliverance. Salvation is uh, is liberty. Salvation right. is to be rescued. So what he what he has what God is saying is that he had chosen or he had elected from the beginning that. Our deliverance from sin, our being rescued from sin, because if we are not rescued from sin, the Bible said the wages of sin is death, and and sin and death has reigned on humanity until Christ came. Christ being the Messiah, understanding the text, this. It's God's plan from the beginning. God has chosen. <laughs> God has chosen you and I from the beginning. He has chosen that our salvation would come, our deliverance would come, our being rescued would come by the sanctification or the setting apart or the declaring or making righteous by the Holy Ghost. This is the plan of God. 
we cannot fall for any other plan because that would be erroneous. And if we are of the mindset that we don't believe in the Holy Ghost, your Bible and my Bible says that uh, there's only one sin that is that cannot and will not be forgiven. And that is blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. He said you can blaspheme the word of God. He said you can blaspheme Jesus. It said, but if we blaspheme the Holy Ghost, there is no forgiveness. You wonder why? Because God has chosen or God has elected from the beginning that our salvation would come through the sanctification of the Holy Ghost. You have to hear what the Spirit is saying. This is God's plan. This was God's plan to, to rescue us. Ah. The greatest, the first and greatest commandment of all was hero Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. And you shall love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, or might, whichever your translation says. Now, Scripture says, God is love. Yes. So when you when you when you slow down and you understand all God ever wanted, all God ever wanted was a creation that loved him. All God ever wanted was a creation that uh, obeyed and enjoyed and was partakers of his provision. That's all he ever wanted. That's all he ever, that's what he created us for, for his, out of his pleasure because he loved us. And his commandment, his commandment was for us to love him in return. What do you what do you lead that? I'm leading that. It has it it has it has always been that God wanted His creation to to operate or function in the same spirit that He had. Love. He created us out of love, and in return, He wanted us to love Him. That was the first and greatest commandment to love Him. So if so, if you understand the Scripture, it has always been. For the people of God to operate and function out of the spirit of love. The spirit, the, the spirit of love or the spirit of God has always been a sanctified spirit, a spirit that was always set apart. Uh, I don't want to go too deep or whatever, but we have we have to understand. So, so in other words, Paul is telling the church, like he said, look. Calm down. <laughs> Don't be confused. You, 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 you are the beloved of, of Christ. You are the beloved of God. And God has from the beginning chosen you uh, to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit. So we have to calm down. We have to settle down and understand that God has God has delivered us. That's what salvation is. He has delivered us from, uh, he has sanctified us, separated us from the bondage of our sin. He has not forsaken us. He has not forsaken us. He has not forgotten us. And he, he, and he will return, and he will, will, return, will return to redeem us. But the Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us that are alive and remain, Scripture said we should be caught up in the air to meet him. So he's not coming down to the ground to grab us by the hand. And if we don't have the Holy Ghost, then we don't have that power to be caught up. All right. God's, we're talking about God's plan of salvation. It's sanctification by the Spirit. It is being set apart by the Spirit of God. It's being set up. Mm. If, this, if God is love, if, if the Spirit of God is love, Amen. <laughs> you have to hear what the 
Spirit is telling us, if the Spirit of God is love, if God is love, then the Spirit of God is love. And if we are sanctified by the Holy Ghost, by the Spirit, mm, then we operate in the Spirit of love. We don't operate in this, we don't operate in the Spirit of unbelief. And I'm only referring to the Word of God. Because, like I quoted earlier, if we blaspheme the Holy Ghost, we're in trouble. So everything about the Word of God, everything about the, the Word of God, uh, we must obey because he has from the beginning chosen us to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit. Now, uh, John, the Gospel of John, let's get into the lesson. The Gospel of John 6, 63 says, it is the Spirit that quickened it. The flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Mm -hmm. Sanctification, let me back that up. Salvation through sanctification of the spirit. Jesus just said the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So what he is saying, he is saying that the word of God the word of God mm -hmm. is speaking. <laughs> the word of God, if we if we believe the word of God, then the word of God will sanctify us. Not only will it sanctify us, but it will give us life, which we know is eternal life, which we now know by the lesson which God has chosen from the beginning to deliver us by or through sanctification of the Spirit, or by the Word. Mm. You got to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So, it behooves you and I to lock our faith in the Word of God and leave it there. <laughs> because this is how our salvation comes. This is how our deliverance comes, through the sanctification of of the word or of the spirit. Moving on. The Gospel of John 17 and 17. Listen to this. He says, the word says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. Go back to the focus verse. The, the second half of the focus verse says, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Here, Jesus said in John, he says, sanctify them. Jesus is talking to the Father. Talking, Jesus is talking to the Father. He's praying to the Father. But he's talking about the disciples. He says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. In order for you, in order for you and I to obtain this salvation that God had chosen from the beginning, we have to realize our sanctification comes through the word, comes through the spirit. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word. So, we have to understand that the, the, infilling, the infilling of the Holy Ghost, as, as it fell on the day of Pentecost, the infilling of the Holy Ghost, the, the law of God written in our heart and mind, it, it, works, it works in our mind and our heart while, we, while we're hearing the word. While the word is sanctifying us, the spirit, of the Holy Ghost in our heart and mind is empowering us to, to obey the word. It's in, it is sanctifying us, understanding that God has chosen this plan of deliverance. Ah, I can get up and shout right now. <laughs> I can get up and shout right now because 
God has destined, God has destined us to eternal life, not to chase every wind of doctrine. We have to stop chasing a man's plan of salvation. God's plan of salvation was from the beginning. He chose us to salvation by through sanctification of the spirit. So you can calm down and you can settle down and you can rest and abide in your Holy Ghost because he will never leave you nor will he forsake you. It doesn't matter what they're doing. Our salvation has our salvation was chosen from the beginning. And he has made us partakers. He has delivered us and made us partakers of it by the Holy Ghost, by his spirit. Mm -hmm. And he gives us his word through the ministry. That way, the, the, we, are, we, are, we are washed by the word. He said, the words, he said, the words that I speak, he said, they are spirit and they are life. This is how he has sanctified us. Through the spirit, it says, and the believing of truth. We're gonna take a pause because <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't we're gonna take a pause because I don't want to sound like a what. But I'm just excited because we, you know, the Lord has given us the Holy Ghost. He's given us those of us that have been born again. We've been baptized. In Jesus' name, and we've been filled with the Holy Ghost. This is how we are sanctified. Mm -hmm. This is God's chosen plan of salvation from the beginning. Yes. There is no other plan of salvation. We're not, we don't have salvation by, by our works. We don't have salvation by the car we drive. We don't have salvation by the house we live in. Salvation. Hear what the Bible is saying, not what people are saying. The Bible is saying God has chosen this from the beginning that salvation would come through the sanctification of the Spirit. You and I will never be able to work we will never be able to work for the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He paid, he, he atoned, he paid it. We will never be able to work for that. The best thing that we can do in order to be declared the righteousness of God is put our faith in Jesus Christ and understand that God is sanctifying us, that God is, is, is setting us apart. Or, if you don't like that one, how about God is purifying us by, by the Holy Ghost. Not, you have, you have to, you, we have to grab this, not because I'm an astronaut, not because I, I work fries at fast food, not because of that. God has leveled the playing field. It, it will never be by our works. It was always God's plan from the beginning, that salvation will come through the sanctification of the Spirit. We have to hear what the Spirit says to church. And so if we are a part or we are attached to a ministry that is telling us we have to go out there and, and I don't know, and, and dig, dig holes in mountains or whatever, I don't know. I don't know what they say these days. But uh, we have to be aware of the false teachers. Romans 15 and 16. It says that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles or non-Jews, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. We are sanctified. We are sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Sanctify, sanctification on your worksheet being set apart or a state of purity, or the action of making or declaring someone holy. God has uh, sanctified us by the Holy Ghost, not by what we think, not by how we feel, none of that. No, no human ingenuity, 
It is grace. It is because of God's unmerited love and faith. We can never pay, we can never pay for it. And so we have to understand how our, our sanctification comes by the Spirit, by the Holy Ghost. So we cannot be a people that don't believe in the Holy Ghost. We cannot be a people that don't believe uh, in the, the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Jesus told him, I will, say, I will pray to the Father that he will send you another comforter. He says, the Holy, the Holy Ghost, which is the comforter. The Holy Ghost. Uh, Jesus told his disciples, you have to hear this, he told his disciples, he said, the Holy Ghost will bring back to your remembrance all things whatsoever I have said or spoken unto you. This is how the Holy Ghost and the Word work. So, if you don't believe in the Holy Ghost, then you then what 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 <laughs> what is what is bringing back to, what is bringing back what spirit is bringing back to your remembrance? You have to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Is it the spirit of disobedience, the Bible said, which worketh in the children of the world today? Is it the spirit of rebellion? Is it the spirit of unbelief? Because Jesus told the disciples, the Holy Ghost will bring back to your remembrance whatsoever I have spoken unto you. This is why the, this is why the Bible says there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word and the Spirit. He said, and these three are one. Are one. When you read the Word of God and you find yourself in situations, the Holy Ghost will bring to your remembrance what the Word says about the situation. This is why you have to wait on God. This is why you can't be hasty. You have to learn to wait on God. You have to die. Anyway, let me get on. That's not what we're dealing with, but that's that that is that is part of our calling. These people were these people were uh were panicking, going, you know, all confused about what's going on. But Paul said, look, the, the, the God has chosen uh you and you from the beginning that your salvation would come through sanctification of the spirit. Sanctification of the spirit means that you you're gonna be a little different, you're gonna be set apart. You, you, you have a different standard All right. because you have the spirit of Christ so you don't do everything you don't say everything you know and so God you know uh, let me let me run my time first Corinthians first Corinthians 1 and 30 it says but of him are ye in Christ Jesus who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Focus verse. The, the latter part of the focus verse. Because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of truth. Corinthians, latter part of 1 Corinthians 1 and 30 said, Who, who of God is made unto us wisdom? And righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Sanctification and redemption. This is God's plan of salvation. Sanctification and redemption. Sanctification. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> I just keep saying the same thing. Oh, look. Our, sanctific our sanctification is, is by the Spirit, by the Holy Ghost. I thank God for the Holy Ghost. You ought to thank God for the Holy Ghost. Because, ah, moving on. 1 Corinthians 6 and 11. Now catch this. 1 Corinthians 6 and 11. It says, And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name 
of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go there. Let's go there. Because that, let's go there. 1 Corinthians 6 and 11. Let's go there and let's read, let's read up. So, so, so that one will make sense. Let's read up. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. And I'll read 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. I'll be reading the King James Version, following the translation we read. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9 says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor infeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, talking about homosexuality. Verse 10, nor thieves, nor covets, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now, verse 11, which we read, it says, look, and such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Such, we, we were such sinners as these that are named in here. It said, but we are sanctified. <laughs> we are sanctified. What, what do you mean? We, are, we have been set apart. We have been purified. We have been uh, declared holy. We have been declared righteousness by the Spirit of God. This is God's plan of salvation to deliver us by or sanctify us, deliver us by the, the Holy Ghost. Not by, not by any other means or method. Because without the, without the power of the Holy Ghost, we would still be, we would still be practicing these, these sins which threaten uh, individuals not to be able to inherit the kingdom of God. We have to be sanctified. We have to be, he said, but we, we was such for some of us. He said, but we are sanctified. We are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we cannot, we cannot continue to practice these sins and ignore the sanctification of God. God is calling for sanctification. And if you have the Holy Ghost, you have the power to be a witness unto Christ. You have the power to live the sanctified or set apart or purified life. This is God's plan of salvation. God don't, God don't have a plan of salvation that will keep you bound to sin. That's, that's the plan of man that keeps you bound to sin, so to speak. God's plan of salvation delivers it sets free. Go to your worksheet. Salvation is described as deliverance, aid, liberty, rescue. God's plan of salvation is to, de to deliver us. And he has chosen that from the beginning that our deliverance and sanctification would come by the Spirit, by the Holy Ghost. Uh, moving on. Acts, Acts 20, 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Those of us that we, the scripture we just read, those of us that are sanctified, that are set apart from the practice or the bondage of those sins that we just read, he has sanctified us, has delivered us from those sins. And now he said, he said, the writer is saying, we have an inheritance among all of them which are sanctified. It was always God's plan of salvation. Always God's plan of deliverance. 
that we would be sanctified uh, by the Spirit. We can, we can, God's, God's Spirit, God's Spirit does not, in, does not lust or envy after bondage. Mm -hmm. it, the Holy, the, the Bible says what the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And so when, when we have the Holy Ghost, like we should have it according to the Bible, then there is liberty, there is deliverance. God's spirit does not desire to be back in bondage. God's spirit does not compromise to be back in bondage. That, that's, that is to uh, crucify Christ again. He's already been crucified for us. The, the Bible said if we, the Bible said if we if if we sin, uh, after that we have you know after that we know the truth if we sin, it says that there remains no more a sacrifice for sin. In other words, Christ is not going to be crucified for sin again. He's done it once. He's done it already. And so sin, when we when we sin now, whether intentionally or unintentionally or whatever you want to call it, now it has to be confessed and repented of. Not confessed and continue to practice. It has to be acknowledged and repented of. Because there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. There's no more sacrifice for sin. Christ was offered up once. So when we error now, we don't if we don't like the word sin, we error. <laughs> if we error now, not only do we have to acknowledge it to God, but we have to repent of it. We have to stop, turn from it. Because God's plan of salvation, God's plan of salvation from the beginning was always sanctification of the spirit. Ah. Do it make sense or not? Ephesians 5 and 26 says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. There it is. I spoke about that a little earlier, but there it is right there. That he may sanctify and cleanse it with, with the washing of water by the word. And if, that would be something real interesting to go back and read because that's dealing with the church. It, it uses uh, marriage. It uses a man and wife <laughs> as a as a as a symbol of the of the church of Christ in the church. And in, and in this verse, he's saying that he might sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. This is the fifth chapter of Ephesians where a lot of people take the, the husband and wife part out of it and deal with it. But Paul said, I, I, you know, Paul said he's talking about Christ in the church, really. How, how Christ, how Christ uh, might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, by the word. God's plan from the beginning was our salvation to come through sanctification of the spirit, the word spirit. Second Timothy. Second Timothy 2 and 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet or, or fit for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. And he said, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. If we, if, if, if we purge ourselves from these things, we should be vessels unto honor, sanctified, or set apart, or in a state of purity, and fit for the master's use and prepared Unto every good work. Jesus said, to, Jesus said, Jesus said, our works as the body of Christ, as the church, 
He said, our works is to believe on mm -hmm. whom the Father has sent. That's our works. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. I don't have time to deal with that, but <laughs> our works, in order, in order for us to be declared righteous, we have to, our faith has to be in Christ. That's our work. Now, you have to understand that the adversary comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. His objective is not to let you and I get rooted and settled and grounded in our faith in Christ. He has been the enemy of God from the beginning. And God's people. The Bible said uh, he beguiled, you know, he deceived Eve in the garden. Mm -hmm. wow. And so that has been his that has been his his job. But when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you have the seal of God. Mm -hmm. And when you Read your word when you study your word. We just read what he said. He the church, he he, he cleans it and he washes it uh, by the water of the word. The Holy Ghost keeps you and I reminded of the promises of God. That way, that way we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have the Holy Ghost, then you don't know the spirit of truth, nor the spirit of error. And so you fall, we fall for what sounds good, what tickles the ears, what sounds good to the flesh. Last one, and I'm done. First Peter, first chapter, the second verse, is it says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience. And sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. This is God's plan, salvation. And I know some of y'all might not like me after this. <laughs> <laughs> but God's, God's plan, God's plan of salvation is, is not to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. See, that's me, man. Jesus, that God raised you. That's man's plan of salvation. As you and I have just found out in the scripture, God has, from the beginning, chosen salvation through sanctification of the spirit. Now, if you turn around and, and, and don't believe the word after that, then, like I said, I don't know. Righteousness uh, without without faith in the Word of God, it's impossible to please God. There's there, man has a plan of salvation, and God has a plan of salvation. And God's plan from the beginning is that our salvation would come through the sanctification of the Spirit, not repeating after the preacher. That's the that's the plan of man. And so, uh, as it is always, we encourage you to repent of your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of them and allow the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is God's plan of salvation. It's God's plan of sanctification for us. It's what separates us unto God. With bow heads, let us pray. We're going to give you a Ran too long. Apologize for the length of time, but be gracious and heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus. We come tonight thanking you once again for your word, Lord God. We thank you for what our ears have heard. We thank you, Lord God, for your plan of salvation, for the comfort of your spirit. We thank you, Lord God, that you are the Lord of our life and that you're sovereign. And beside you, there is no other God. There is no other Savior. You are the only help that we have. We ask that you would take us from this place, never from your presence, bring us back again 
at the appointed time. Look upon each and every one of us that is under the sound of my voice. We pray that your favor, that you would find favor with each and every one according to your will, according to our needs. And we'll praise you and glorify you in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, we thank God for you all being with us.